personal best. I just want to give a quick thanks to the Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Puma, Cat Crab Lobster, and Duck Machine. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. Bad Decisions Lead to Bad Times, written by Barsoom Israel. As Drac walked down the clean, sterile corridor of the hospital wing that he was in, he briefly checked his note. Claimant requests $4,500 credit plus hospital costs for a case of indigestion. Drac smiled. His job as an insurance investigator was to ferret out false claims, and any claim over 200 credits almost always required verification. 4,500 credits, plus hospital costs for a case of indigestion, was absurd and easy to deny. He just needed to get an official statement from the applicant before he could deny the claim. Applicant, John Marshall, human. Ugh. Jack had dealt with humans before, and though most of them were pleasant enough, a few could be troublesome. Most of the serious issues his office had dealt with lately were in dealing with humans. Drac reached the end of the corridor and opened the door to the room that held the human known as John. Drac was stunned as he saw the man lying in the hospital bed, bandaged and groaning in pain. His face was puffy and bruised. He appeared to have lost some teeth and it appeared that both of his arms had been broken. Confused, Drac once again checked his paperwork. Yep, indigestion. He double-checked the room number and again he was correct. Um, John, he began slowly. The human turned to look at Drac through one eye, as the other was purple and swollen shut. Yes, John said. Even his voice sounded like he was in pain. Putting on his business face, Drac strode forward and offered John a hand, but withdrew it when he remembered that the human had no working appendages. Um, hello, my name is Dracton Nassar from the Universal Life and Health and I'm here to follow up on your insurance claim due to about of uh, indigestion. John blinked his good eye slowly, as if even his movement caused him agony. Yes, he replied, indigestion. I'm afraid I'll need a statement, Drax said, as well as how indigestion caused you to claim such an uh, unusually high amount uh, of damages. Drac was impressed that he was able to refrain from saying absurd about. Oh, man, John groaned. It was like this. Uh, I was assigned to the garbage frigate Hall of Three as the chief engineer. Drac nodded his understanding, taking notes as the human spoke. We were three days out of dock when the cook, a Talarian named Fluke, asked some of the crew if they wanted to try a delicacy from his homeworld. Sure, we thought. Sounds great to us. Drac scribbled his notes as the human continued. He already had written the word DENIED in large capital letters across the top of his notepad. So, um, we sat down to eat Fluke's feast, as he called it. John continued. You know, it, it tasted pretty good. I, I was not sure what was in it, but it wasn't bad. <sighs> It wasn't until later that night that it began to hit us. Please continue, Drax said. He really wasn't even paying attention at this point. So, it hit the Navigate first. An amphibian from Verloc, too. Well, she was trying to plot a navigation course. She suddenly erupted in a geyser of vomit. Poor girl was mortified, trying to run off the ship bridge, trailing a grey green remains of Fluke's feast from her mouth when she doubled over from stomach cramps. Here, John paused and looked at Drac. Do you know how painful stomach cramps are when you have four stomachs? Poor thing was in agony. Anyway, as she was helped off the bridge, it hit the Transit Authority Marshal next. His name was unpronounceable, so we just called him Bob. Anyways, um, well, Bob tried to make a dash for the lower decks, with the captain yelling after him, asking where he thought he was going. But Bob turned around, as if to try and explain, when he too went off like a volcano, drenching a poor custodian in Fluke's feast, which sent that poor soul retching all over the place as well. Drax stared at the human before him. What the hell was going on? So, 
The captain turns to me to ask something, but I just shake my head, no, and head for the door. I felt a burning in my guts. No, what I mean, John asked, and Drack nodded in agreement, even though he certainly did not know what he meant. He just needed to find out what was happening on the ship. I mean, my guts felt like they were lava, and I knew that I'd be yakking up everything I ate for the last week soon. S somehow, I, I managed to make it to the head and spent the next three hours on my knees doing the old Technicolor yawn. Drack noticed John's eyes now look haunted, as if the memory of this event was painful to him. I was drinking water so that I would have something to come up. You feel me? John almost sounded like he was pleading. Drack nodded. So, the whole ship went down into lockdown. Each and every person who ate Brook's Feast was in agony. And that wasn't the end of it, let me tell you. After all the vomiting, it started hitting the uh, other end, if you catch my drift. Emergency buckets were placed on all corridors, where if a sick crew member could not make it to the head, they could just puke or do their business right there. It was awful. Drack could swear he could almost see a tear escape from John's tightly closed eyes. I know this is difficult, but to make a decision, I'll need you to continue, Drack encouraged. Nodding grimly, John gathered his strength and carried on. After th three solid days of this hell, he said, the crew was desperate. Every slight shift, every movement caused the crew mates to either void their stomachs or make a run from the room, praying that they would make it to a bucket in time before they would ruin another uniform bottom. Drack was paying full attention now. Even if this was all a lie, it was the best story he'd heard in a while. So, the navigator comes to join me, John continued. Her eyes were all bloodshot because she popped some vessels dry heaving. She begged me, literally begged me to do something to make the pain stop. What could I do? I wasn't a doctor. And the manic we had was suffering along with the rest of us. Then it hit me. Here John paused for a second and looked Drack through his puffy eye. Now remember, I hadn't slept in three days, he explained. I wasn't thinking with all my faculties. Drack nodded, almost dreading what John would say next. Well, so the navigator and most of the rest of us were in a bad way, and she was begging me to make it stop. Begging me, mind you. Drack just waited. With a sigh, John continued. Well, it was a slight movement that set everyone off, see, so I got the idea if movement were no longer detectable, like, say, uh, if the artificial gravity was turned off, it would make everything better, see? I mean, uh, how can you get motion sick if there was not motion to speak of? See? See? Drak just stood there, aghast. Don't tell me that you didn't. I did, John wailed. I swear I thought it would make things better. I swear. I shut off the gravity. The second I did, people were spinning in the air everywhere. All you could hear was screams. Screams and retching. And worse. Much, much worse. John was almost crying now. The air was filled with floating pools of vomit. Crew members were voiding themselves everywhere. The smell, good God, a uh, smell haunts me to this day. With the last strength I had, I reactivated the gravity, sending people hurtling to the floor to be covered in the vomit and the other fluids that were floating around just moments before. Drak was stunned. So, was that the cause of your injuries? Drak asked after a very long pause. The fall when the gravity was restored. No, came the weak reply. The injuries were from death. What is a death? Drak asked. Not what? Who? Teth was the head security officer. A venid, eight feet tall, all muscle and sinew. Why would the head of security officer attack you? Drak asked incredulously. Well, see, uh, Teth just happened to be walking down the main corridor when I shut off the gravity. The main corridor was the most used, see. So there were, well... Let's just say the many buckets that had been used in that area. When the gravity stopped, 
All the buckets and death were thrown around like ping pong balls. When the gravity came back on, I was told there was not a square inch of death that was not covered in some sort of expelled bodily fluid. John looked up with agony in his good eye. Someone told him my eye was the one who shut off the gravity. John finished. No other explanation needed to be given. Drac stood over the lump, broken form that was once a man. He already scratched out the word denied from his notes. Universal life and health would cover his hospital bills. With the 4,500 credits... John, Drac asked slowly, why do you need 4,500 credits? John grimaced, his good eye squeezing tight in shame. The captain, he answered, is charging me for all the cleaning costs. As Drac left the hospital, he filled out the insurance investigation form. Claim approved. Reason indigestion. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed.